So I just published a video about languages in Montreal where I asked strangers uh, what languages they speak. And occasionally I would ask follow-up questions too. Like if someone, I wouldn't ask everyone because some people are just busy, they're going about their day, you know. So I just ask quickly like, hey, I'm doing a video project. Uh, can you tell me how many languages you speak? And some people, obviously, they got places to go. They don't want to talk. But occasionally you get someone who you can tell from their energy, they're, they're very receptive, they're open. And I would ask follow-up questions, you know, if they ask, if they speak an unusual language, I would ask them if they could say something for the camera. Or on a couple occasions, if someone like doesn't speak English, I would ask, what's it like in Montreal without English? If someone doesn't speak French, I would ask, what's it like in Montreal without French? And for those who have never been to Montreal, this might seem like very simple questions, but uh, there's actually, you know, there's there's a whole political world to these questions. It's actually a touchy subject for some people. <laughs> and at one point, uh, one man in the video uh, kind of got my face and he, his energy. He, he didn't like the fact that I was asking this question. Um, yeah, I actually thought he might smack my camera for a moment. He didn't. He didn't get that extreme, but he kind of stepped to me in a way that made me feel like it's clear this guy... Uh, doesn't want an English speaker like myself asking people about languages in Montreal. So just know that there are French Canadians who are very proud of the French language. Uh, there are English Canadians who are sometimes too proud of their language and feel they don't need to learn French. And there's like this whole tension sometimes in the city. And. I didn't want to comment on that tension, but I wanted to make something about languages and just ask strangers. Um, and the cool thing about street interviews, the reason I've been enjoying doing them recently, is I don't need to come up with all the answers, you know? Like, if someone asks me, like, I mean, to be fair, I've already made that topic. A couple of years ago, I made a video called Do You Need French to Live in Montreal? Uh, if you're curious on that topic, I would recommend you watch it because I, I go pretty deep into my thoughts there. But the short answer is you can survive without French, but I would not recommend it. I would recommend you start learning as soon as you can, at least basic French, and it'll make your life a lot easier. But, um, yeah, so so anyway, I'm, I, I've, I've spoken in a lot of videos. I've done neighborhood tours. I've been doing YouTube for like over six years now. And sometimes I just get tired of my own voice, you know? Sometimes I get curious what other people think. And what other, la what other languages people speak. Because Montreal is such a multicultural place that what you quickly realize is a lot of people speak at least three. Because if you're from another culture and then you move to Montreal, you're probably going to learn French to survive. And you might need to learn English as well. Or at least, you know, what people who have two languages, like they usually pick up English at that point, because if you're good at languages, English gives you like so many television and music options you can enjoy in English. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I'm curious. I'm always curious how many languages people speak. And it was a cool video. I, I was happy with how that turned out. I made one big mistake. There were two uh, lovely Quebecois women who actually had who knew my channel. They'd watched videos before, and they gave an answer. And I wasn't recording. Oh, I checked my footage later, and there was a little clip of me just saying goodbye to them, like meaning that when I thought I pressed stop on my camera, I actually pressed start, which means like the whole part where they were actually giving their answer. I don't have. So, uh, <laughs> on the very small chance that, I don't even know your names, but if you happen to see this, I'm sorry, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't cutting you out of the video, I just uh, didn't get that clip. Uh, there were a couple people I did cut out of the video, not, not because there was anything wrong with them, but like sometimes, like one of them, I got the light, lighting really bad, and um, I don't know, there were like a few people who just... Uh, their answers were like quite basic and like a lot of people just English, French, English, French, English, French, Spanish. And actually I was surprised how many people spoke Spanish. That was like, 
that was something I thought might be the case because especially after I spent my time in Mexico and Colombia and then came back to Mo Montreal, you know, like when you've been surrounded by a language for a while, you just hear it more often. I started hearing the, the Spanish language on the streets of Montreal all the time. And I was like, am I imagining this? Am I, is this like confirmation bias? I'm just hearing it everywhere. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the linguistic similarities between French and Spanish. I mean, logically, that would make sense, right? There's people who are Spanish speakers and maybe they find it an easier transition to French than to English. So they gravitate more to Quebec. That's just my, uh, I have no data to back up that statement. That's just, I guess I kind of do have data now that I did this survey. Like technically I do have the data of the people I spoke to in that video. <laughs> um, another thing worth mentioning is I feel like, I mean, I'm trying to be accurate with these videos, but I also know that there is a bias because some people said no. Uh, maybe less than I would say like about 50% of people didn't want to be in the video some people are just camera shy and some people don't know who I am and they just don't want to talk to a stranger that's cool uh, but some people when they heard it was about languages they were like ah oh, no I don't want to do that or no like you know either in English or French they would say no and I just got the feeling sometimes that they only spoke one language and they didn't really want to say that maybe it was a slight point of embarrassment they were just like nah like I don't want to be on the internet admitting I only speak one language. It's almost embarrassing in Montreal because uh, it's seen as such a bilingual city. And, uh, you know, it's hard for English speakers because if you have arrived with only English, French Canadians will, like, point at that person and be like, look at him or her, own, like, not assimilating in the culture. Like, this is exactly what we're talking about. We don't want these people here. Uh, but also for French Canadians, like, they... I understand it because, you know, they feel like Quebec is the French place, but now increasingly they need English to survive. So even for French only people, it's seen as almost, uh, maybe not embarrassing, but just kind of like an annoyance or something, something people would not be quick to admit. Um, yeah. Anyway, it was an interesting experience. And hopefully this video gives you a bit of insight into why I'm doing more street interviews. It's because honestly, they have an element of surprise to me. I, I, I like it. I like the people I meet. It reminds me that there's cool people in the city. I like the answers I get. They're surprising. They're fun for me to make. It's something different from my channel. I know some people out there love the classic travel vlogs. And I'll, I think the best version of this content would be somehow a mix. Like, I wonder, would that succeed on YouTube if it was, like, um, me doing these interviews but also vlogging in between a little bit? Maybe that'd get boring. Maybe people would just skip to the answers. I don't know. But anyway, my content is evolving. I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think of this type of video.